Hello friends and welcome to my newest build. This is a 2019 Ram 2500 Bighorn with the 6.4 liter Hemi. I had a 2016 Silverado that uh, you didn't see on this channel, but I used it for towing my travel trailer. Great truck, but uh, had around 75,000 miles on it. I was getting to the point where uh, it was just a little long in the tooth for towing my trailer uh, and the size trailer. So it was time to uh, upgrade. I went with the 2500 because I really wanted to build this out uh, as more of an adventure vehicle, not just a tow vehicle. Uh, we'll continue to work on the WK2 on this channel uh, and adding parts and accessories. That's still my road trip vehicle. It's still my daily driver, but this is gonna be more the uh, weekend vehicle, the fun vehicle, the vehicle I don't need to fit in a parking garage downtown. So it gives me a little bit of flexibility. Uh, we'll talk about the interior in a little bit, but again, this is just a 2500. Uh, the Bighorn is really just one step up from a tradesman. This particular Bighorn does have the Ram box, which we'll take a look at here in a minute, which for me was uh, kind of a no-brainer. The dealership had already leveled this truck out, so it's running a Daystar uh, leveling kit on the front, um, but they also put in new Bilstein shocks on this truck. It does have the, um, from the factory, the coil spring rear suspension. So this thing rides amazing. I uh, really, really like it. Also, the dealership put these wheels and tires and side steps on it. Um, the next video that you guys will see, the first video of the build, is actually gonna be replacing these. Uh, these are 325 20s They are useless. I can't even really get into my driveway without rubbing. So we're gonna be putting on a uh, smaller set of wheels and tires. We're gonna be going with Method uh, tires, or excuse me, Method wheels, which I love. Uh, I think it'll give it a much more aggressive look. And uh, we'll also be getting rid of these Nitto Terra Grapplers and going with some Pro Comp All Terrains. Uh, these aren't bad tires, but they're pretty much useless in the rain. And I need this vehicle to go pretty much anywhere I wanna go. These would be great for off-road, but I think they're gonna be terrible for anything else. Uh, it does have the sport appearance package, which uh, for me was really important. And uh, it comes with the tow hooks and the protection package as well. So really a great starting point for uh, building out kind of an adventure vehicle. The only things I've done so far uh, in the build is I threw on some WeatherTech um, mud flaps just because of the offset of these tires. Uh, I didn't want to damage the paint. Uh, before I took it off road the first time. So those are probably temporary once the methods go on. Uh, and I've also had Linex uh, Extreme Vehicle Design here in uh, Noblesville, Indiana. And uh, they did a fantastic job with this Linex. Um, if you're debating, there's no question the quality of Linex these days is, uh, is so much better than the factory. And then uh, you know, the other big selling point for this truck was the Ram boxes, and uh, that one is full of camping chairs. But I'll just kind of show you, um, if you're looking to build an overland vehicle or a, um, you know, really just anything you're gonna use on the weekends, um, there is just a tremendous amount of room inside of these Ram boxes. Um, they are fully LED lit. Actually, they're not LED lit. The bed is LED lit. Um, it has a an outlet in it. So just, uh, tremendous amount of, of usability. And this is a uh, Bighorn. And if you're not familiar with the nomenclature for Ram trucks, the Bighorn is pretty much just like one above the tradesman. And so you're not going to get uh, all of the fun stuff, but um, this one is fairly well appointed and I think pretty representat uh, representative of the Bighorn in general. There are a few options that I'll speak to, but again, it doesn't have most of the bells and whistles uh, that the other trucks do. So uh, one of the biggest changes or differences with a big horn is you get the smaller center stack. So uh, certainly tells you everything you need to know, um, mile per hour, uh, information about the vehicle. So things like the tire pressure when the oil change is, is required, things of that nature. Um, it does have fuel economy, you do have a dedicated trip info. 
uh, trailer towing, radio. So all of the common things that you would find in, in most of the new uh, Chrysler products. Uh, the only difference is it's obviously a much smaller screen. You don't have quite as much control, but you do have a dedicated battery, a dedicated um, oil pressure uh, and um, temperature gauge, obviously a dedicated tachometer and speedometer. So everything you need, really nothing you don't. Uh, I did find out the hard way that it does have intelligent um, readouts for your lights. So if a headlamp, tail light, turn signal, reverse lamp, any of those are, are out, it will tell you that. So it is more than just the, the readout. Um, obviously you do get the steering wheel mounted controls. This does not have, what would go here is the um, adaptive cruise control. This obviously does not have that as a big horn, but you do get all of the controls. Um, stereo is back behind, it does have cruise control, which is great. And then uh, because this has what I've heard a lot of people fondly refer to as the radio knob transmission, um, you do not have the column, which is great. Uh, gives you much better access to the push button start, which I believe is new for 2019 with the Ram 2500s. And your gear shift limiter uh, ends up going here on the steering wheel, which I think is a much better place. This does have the 8.4 uh, Uconnect system. Uh, this particular model has the Alpine stereo system, uh, Apple CarPlay and Google uh, Android Auto. Uh, works really, really well. The only complaint that I do have is, unlike my Silverado, you have, kudos to them, both USB and uh, USB-C plugs. You've got a, a couple sets of them. These are the only USBs that you can use for the Android Auto or the Google CarPlay. So, uh, excuse me, Apple CarPlay. There is a plug inside of the um, center console but it does not run to the stereo. So that's a little, little unfortunate. It's only used for charging. But uh, you do get a nice setup. This particular model um, does have the backup cam. It is a two-way backup cam. And so it will show you both behind you, and you can do that while driving, which is fantastic. Um, but it also will show you by zooming in just your tail, uh, tailgate itself, or the actual um, um, towing hitch, rather. So um, gonna be really handy for the times I have to go pick up the RV uh, by myself. Other than that, not a whole lot of functionality. If we take a look at the apps that are included, um, in my Jeep, I believe I scroll two or three times through the apps. Not very much uh, included in this. Again, it has the Alpine stereo, which is fantastic. Much better than the Bose um, that was in my previous vehicle. It does have auto dimming mirror, and you do obviously have um, your settings built in. Uh, not a whole lot that you can adjust on this vehicle. One of the things I was kind of disappointed was that when you lock the vehicle, there is no option for the mirrors to fold in automatically, uh, where it does that on some of the other trucks. Pretty simple layout uh, from the stereo down. Um, it does have uh, an actual volume knob, which I think is great. It has a real tuning knob, which is great. So both of those fairly straightforward. Um, this does not have the automatic climate control that is available, obviously, on the Ram 2500, but given that this is just the big horn, uh, it does not. One of the fantastic features is this. Ram has always done a great job of having the trailer brake control where it needs to be in the vehicle uh, for, for most right-handed people. So uh, really happy to move to that from the Silverado. And then this vehicle does have the front and rear park sensors, which... I highly recommend if you're looking at a Ram 2500, this thing is a beast. You do have a very, very, and mine is full of crap, but you do have a very spacious um, glove compartment here. Uh, and then you also, the beauty of, of this setup is clearly the ability to seat three people wide, uh, but also you have another setup down here um, that you can put additional stuff in. And this is, is pretty good size. I'm actually going to be mounting a lockable storage uh, down here. So I'll do a video uh, of that once I've done it. But going to be putting a, basically a, for lack of a better term, a gun safe. You'll be able to put anything you want in there. But I'm actually going to mount that hard in here. So I'll, I'll share that video. And then you get this nice little cubby, uh, which uh, has some, some non-skid. 
I've been keeping my phone down here and it does not go anywhere. So uh, really happy with, with all the storage that you get when you do not have the console. Uh, about two weeks into owning the vehicle, uh, I discovered this, which is an entire another drawer. So as if you did not have enough storage already, there is additional storage here. So um, while it does not have the console, it does have a lot of extra features that I think for me outweigh the console. And then obviously, as has been the case with Ram trucks for a while, the, uh, the wonderful hidden glove box setup. Um, other than that, pretty straightforward vehicle. I mean, it's got the um, carpeted or the cloth interior, does have carpeted floors. Um, this cloth is obviously so far holding up really, really well. I will say it is, in my opinion, at least short term, much more comfortable than the leather. And it does seem to clean very, very easily. I have a dog with white dog hair and um, it literally just brush off with your hand. You don't need uh, uh, any kind of, uh, of lint brush. Um, and then of course it does have your map lights, does have uh, sunglass storage, and it is a dimmable mirror. So overall, pretty happy with um, the exterior, or excuse me, the interior. First order of business is obviously getting rid of these wheels and tires. No offense to folks who like this stanced look, but overall, it just doesn't make sense. I've lost almost all the functionality of the front suspension. I have very limited range of motion when turning the vehicle. It rubs going into my driveway. So if I really want to use this vehicle for any off-road capability, even just fire, fire roads or gravel roads, these wheels and tires have to go. So I'm dropping down to a 20 by 9 Method Race NV style in flat black wrapped in a 295-60-20 Pro Comp TA tire. Now these tires are not gonna be quite as aggressive, so I'm hoping they're a little bit quieter. I'm also hoping they're a little bit better on wet traction, as I fear these Nito Terra Grapplers are gonna be even worse in snow than they are right now in the rain. Will the truck look smaller? Sure, but having those wheels tucked in underneath the fender is really going to save me problems with my paint, and with suspension and drive components like wheel bearings. I also think it's gonna make the vehicle tow better long-term, which ultimately is what this vehicle is meant to do. Secondly, I'm looking to add a rack over the back bed. The challenge with the Ram boxes is that many of the aftermarket options out there do not allow the Ram boxes to open and close. But luckily, in August, I ran into a company called Nuthouse while I was at the Jeep Invasion in Pigeon Forge, and I really like the product that they're offering. So look for a video, likely in the next couple of months, of me working with them to build a rack specific to this truck. And finally, we're looking at lighting. I would love to get as much lighting on this vehicle as possible. Because I set up my RV often at night, and because I like to take a lot of drives in, on the, in the country in deer-infested Indiana, being able to have as much light as possible on back roads and country roads is imperative. So I'm hoping for some rigid replacements to the fog lights, as well as a light bar in the front bumper. So stay tuned. Otherwise, thanks for watching this video. If you have suggestions of things that I should look at for this vehicle, please leave them in the comments below. Or if you're looking for a Ram 2500 and there's more questions you have or something else you'd like me to review, please leave those comments as well. I'd also love it if you subscribe to my channel and watch my videos, and also follow me on Instagram where I post pictures of the adventures we take in all my vehicles.